But talking of inside, 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 outside, mm. you, your profession is basically bouncing light off the outsides of that, actors, costumes, yes, and yes, sets. Right. How do you make it seem as if the light is come from within? I think I think that is a choice of a combination of all the factors of you know intensity, color, direction, uh, ch rate of change, and so on. And it, it does really come back to this business of that if a character is uh, what would you call him like a bright you know sparkish character you might find a way to give him a little more kind of edge in light so that the all right the let's get very specific maybe we can make a two shot with the other camera mm -hmm. if you were going to light susan your wife beside you yeah. assume you are married if you were going to light susan beside you and make it very sparkly exterior where would you put the lights well i think you'd you'd, you'd start probably with something that would give her a good say back key right. that would give a, an edge to the the sort of the figure uh, then probably Up so so fairly the... fairly high and and not necessarily directly back but like off to the side and then you'd fill in with what would in fact be uh, probably uh, one light from one side stronger than the light from the other side so you've got uh, a, a nice sort of edge of like uh, highlight versus, I mean, when I say highlight versus shadow, we're not talking relativity, but one side looks like sharper than the other side. And so that you'll get a sort of a, a what I would call a perky, sharp image. If it were the case that we wanted to light her very romantically, um, you tend to lower the angles of the light so you fill in so you see lots of eyes. Uh, and you would. Lines. <laughs> no, 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 no! You get rid of the lines. Get rid of the, the lines. More, so the lights get, come down. They get rid yeah, of them. yeah. Because I mean, the, in the old days, I mean, the, the the old actresses all wanted footlights, 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 because oh. footlights fill the normal lines. Or if you work with Shirley MacLaine, you always look younger on camera besides Shirley MacLaine because you were in her That's, light, is, which her light. is yes, yeah. straight on and absolutely, and it takes yeah. at least fifteen years off you. And yes, you yeah. Look a bit weird. And and you you, you you would you would probably tend to want to not get such an edged quality right. but rather a more sort of s literally soft light quality in other words uh, rather than point sources try to spread out the kind of thing we've got here with the, the television uh, right. and so that you're looking at ways always I think of trying to as I say create that appropriateness so that the, the people feel at home I mean when I say that the, the, the audience sees people feeling at home in the space and the, the let's take it one step further with yeah. susan and lighting yeah. susan yeah and it was a very interior play about interior uh sense and mo interior monologue um where would you go then with the lights you want to seem as if susan herself okay. is emitting the light I, I as think, opposed to being lit i by. think there you'd probably work on a principle i mean in, in, in an ideal world uh if you had access to a follow spot you'd actually use the follow spot uh, so that like each of the characters, say if there's three characters in a scene, each of the characters actually has a follow spot. So that the faces are kind of always glowing that little bit more than the surround. And in fact, I mean, it's your business that nothing is new under the sun. Uh, because you go back to good old David Belasco, and he, he used to do this way back in the, I guess it was what, the teens and sort of early 20s that he would have five operators on the lighting bridge above a proscenium stage, each with a little tiny lamp. And he would follow each of the principal characters. So each appeared to be kind of glowing. Now, if you can't do that, if it's a fairly static scene, you would put what's called a special on each of the faces so that the surround was sort of soft and you could call it sort of soft edged. But you just simply glow the face that little bit. Uh, in, in, say, ballet, uh, you want to pick out, like in Romeo and Juliet, you want to pick out the two principles Romeo and Juliet from the crowd at the big ball scene and you get a couple of really good spot operators who can just edge the light levels a little bit above the ambient light for those two characters and then it, if it's if it's done well you don't really realize they're in follow spots but there is that sense that they are glowing and everybody else is not quite as well lit. So a question for my own ignorance. With those spot operators in Romeo and Juliet, would they be alternating the, uh, the intensity of the follow spot as, as they dance from a bright spot to a dimmer spot to a bright spot? Yeah, a good, a, a, well, yeah, two things. The operator will, will keep the light balance 
the way that the lighting director has asked for. In other words, if it's just a little bit above the ambient light, if they're into a, a bright area of the stage, they would up the intensity if they go into a darker area so that the spot doesn't suddenly become obvious, they take it down. Or the other classic is that if the two people come together, then they dim both spots a little bit so that the, the overlap doesn't show. Right. And, and, and you get, I mean, quite honestly, this is where uh, my work relies tremendously on the skill of a lot of the people I work with and a really good follow spot operator can make the lighting look fantastic, a really bad operator. You made the light look unbelievable. I mean, I remember one show where they didn't follow, they didn't spot, because the light was always behind somebody, <laughs> and it was always badly out of focus. I mean, it was a great big dead spot, uh, you know, sort of in the center of the beam or something, so that you had this finally sort of donut effect. Uh, so that you can get, I mean, the, the badly lit shows are badly lit mechanically, but also badly lit me uh, from the point of view of the emotion. That you, you go and you say there's something wrong with the quality of this light. You know, that it's a sort of, say it's a, again, a romantic kind of piece and the lighting looks awfully kind of hard. Well, it's very difficult for an audience to kind of get into the romance if right. they're bothered, it's often sort of almost subconsciously, by the quality of the light. 